Hey everyone, this is Tatiana Spiterio of Alterok, and I'm here with Mikko von Herzen of von Herzen Brothers. Where are you? What's going on? I'm currently in my Indian home in Kerala, in one of the southern states of India. I've uh, I've had this place for more than 25 years now, so yeah, I'm here. I finally got to come here after a long, long year of working. So wow. yeah, it's definitely like a second home. Yeah, 25 years. It's it's definitely my second home. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, good. So you're going to have a big, big thing coming up that is release your new album in Murmuration. Yeah, on October 25th, and uh, it's, it reflects, as I understand, the state of bird group think and group movement in the sky and this united change of direction without much thinking, so to say. Does it reflect the state of the band as well that you are very much in unison and the group movement towards the new like horizons and music goals? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Uh, well, you know, as brothers, we have that. Obviously, we are we are in sync in many ways. You know, so it's uh, uh, there's three guys who who have. Uh, of course, we are individuals, but we do have like similar traits and similar like char char characteristics and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think I think uh, the album is more about just uh, you know we felt like it was. It was time to kind of like let loose and enjoy life a little bit more than on the previous pro previous album, which was more like pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, reflecting on those feelings that the pandemic had on 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 us as as creative artists. So this is more like okay, you know, we have maybe we had those songs that we felt like okay, these are a little bit more upbeat and they are maybe a little bit more positive and stuff. So we wanted to. Uh, for a change, make an album like that. Yeah. But even though it's not in pandemic times, you mentioned that it was accompanied the writing of the album by bruises, sweat, deadlines, and tears. Why that? <laughs> what is meant by those? Well, things? <laughs> you know, we were we uh, this year, 2024. We really worked really hard. You know, because we had a initially like like when the when the year started, we just finished our acoustic tour, and then then we had a only a few months time to kind of uh, get that uh, the live album together and <clears throat> after getting that together we were already kind of in the studio working on this one and everybody was so busy and we it was hard to find time to do this but if eventually like we all were able to kind of like work long hours and and you know that's where the blood sweat and tears come from right when you're just very <laughs> focused and you work your ass off to, to to meet the deadlines and and to make sure that you know the band is moving forward i had like two days off in the summer so that also like two days know, off here now, only two off. days off yeah there was no summer holidays because it's like i was playing uh uh gigs with kingston wall and then we had some with one hurt and brothers and you know, doing uh, just just trying to trying to kind of like take all these projects somehow forward. So now being here in India, having a little bit of downtime is uh, feels really good. Yeah, it, it, it's a necessity. It's a must. Otherwise, you'll just burn out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first single that came out, Starlings, from the new album is more like, to me, it's more like a poem, you know, rather than a song with the long storytelling lines and this literary metaphors. And it's not so typical of most songs that you listen to, which are more like just based on rhythm and melody. So did you come up with the lyrics first? How did that happen? How did you make such an eloquent text? You know, the whole thing I had, I had in my phone, I had the title Starlings for a long time because I remember like watching, watching that in that murmuration of the starling uh, flock uh, and thought that, oh my God, this is something I need to write a, a song about. Because it, it is poetic, you know, whenever any, po any poem like refers to that murmuration, it is very poetic because in that there is like uh, underlining already all those themes of like, you know, the, the movement and the flow and, and, you know, how they react to each other when they fly. So, that idea was there for a long time. So the idea was there and then the song came and then I incorporated those two so that there would be like a little bit of like a, you know, like a reflective, reflective point of view for the whole thing, you know, what it means to me in my life, you know, and, and what, what, how do I see that, you know, 
what is the what is the kind of like what can what can I learn from this? You know, yeah, it came out very so, like beautifully eloquent and like you are reading some kind of a coherent text rather than listening to a song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I also feel like you know all the elements of the song. You know, just the music also has uh, when you listen to when you listen to it the, like the fast movements in it and all that. It kind of like. It's very nicely in sync with the text also. So yeah, Absolutely. we are happy about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, Starling's lyrics to me show a bit of disturbance and unhappiness with like reality and humanity. And the last line goes, by watching them, I feel all right, which kind of underlines that you only find your Zen moments in those moments of bird watching, but the rest of the world is in like total disharmony. Like, so what kind of things do you find hard to accept in the real world? Well, you know, um, you know, the big concern, obviously, for us all is the, you know, what's happening to our climate. Like I came here and a month ago, just like 200 kilometers that way, there was a big landslide and more than 400 people died because of the rains. And now we have like rains in Europe and people are losing their homes. And, and we had a typhoon, typhoon just like in in even more like east from here so it's it's just all, all these things are happening at the same time and it feels like it, it's rapidly changing you know for us as humans mm -hmm. and we are only are, we have only ourselves to blame about it you know because we have we have overused our planet that's the fact that's a fact so you know the, you know that's kind of like the as an artist you always refer to those things that feel in your life, either personal or then globally, as very, very like important, Impact, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that, for example, on this album, like there is like two two things that we play with. There's the personal, and then there's the global. And the, and Starlings, for example, is a good example of the global. And then the next song that we'll put out, Ascension Day, is more about like individual, like an individual feeling, and and so. Yeah, those are the things that usually as a as a creator, as a creative artist and a writer, you just try to try to tap into those things and try to be very honest about how you feel about stuff. Because we are human, we also feel like, you know, we need to also like pour our hearts into the music, you mm -hmm. know, because that's our channel, right? So there are two things. There's the individual like, you know, for example, heartbreak or whatever, you know, if you if you have lost confidence in somebody or something. That's one part of it. Or if you if you feel like you are somehow united with everything, you know, there's a song on the new album called "Beneath the Silver Stars," which is kind of the opposite from like uh, suffering. It's also like that you you as a person, you know, you are linked into this whole universe in a very beautiful way. And Starlings was a good example about like how how um, how something that you see can be so beautiful and it's not man-made it's not something that you made but it, it was created and and it's something that you can't explain but you can just like be in awe when you see that happening yeah. in front yeah. of you and all these things are just like you know they're metaphors you can use that you use all those me metaphors in your music you know because Absolutely. at least me as a you know as a kind of um, I have a tendency to be a very po poetical guy, you so are. Okay. I see, I see, uh, I see in creation basically only beauty, and and then in in the creation of humans or men, I see the ugliness in it. Oh. Not all of it is ugly. Many of the things are also beautiful, but you know, you know. Whatever it's, it's an artistic vision, of course. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So. Whatever was created by nature and God, if if you believe in God, usually it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And from now on, basically you can call your army of fans starlings as well. Have you thought about it? Because it all also sounds nice, but also it implies that your fans are moving in the same music direction with you guys from Melbourne. Good idea. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so next time you write uh, ye yo starlings. How are you doing? <laughs> In the opening yeah, yeah. album track, The Relapse, you mentioned a specific period of time. I found 10 years, 9 months, 8 days. I've been hiding like a monk in my cave. Is that something that relates to your life or more on a fictional side? Uh, well, uh, it's fictional, but at the same time, it's something that, you know, like, you know, we all try to be better persons, right? We are trying to, you know, uh, better ourselves in many ways. And then this, uh, the title, title relapse is kind of like that. You, you just go like, okay, I can't, you know, 
I, I missed the opportunity or I kind of like it. I just, it's too strong. I have to put my hands up in the air and just let it go. You know, it's uh, it's one of those rocker songs, album opener. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounded good. Uh, there was no calendar that said 10 years, eight, nine months and eight days, but it just sounded good. It's also like 10, nine, eight. So yeah. we are kind of like, it's a countdown kind of thing. Yeah, so I felt I like that would be a poetic <laughs> way of saying yeah. Okay. But at the same time, I was thinking because you had some periods, I think you stayed in India much longer. And I thought maybe you had this sort of like monk periods in your life. <laughs> I did. I did have a monk period in my life. I was leading a monastic, monastic life here. And um, yeah, but it didn't last that long. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was also surprised by the song Tightrope Walker because it reminded me of this American marching bands, you know, and I almost have a picture of this procession with men playing drums and wind instruments oh, wow. marching. <laughs> what inspired yeah. such a rhythmical song? Well, it's a it's a it's a song written by my big brother Kia. So you have you you would have to ask him, but we felt that it's kind of quirky, you know, the rhythm part of it. It, it felt like it was something that we never done before. So it was very interesting to do that. And also like, you know, on this album, there are main, uh, a lot of like pop rock elements. So uh, we felt like, okay, this is, this is kind of like a little bit towards that prog that we used to used to also have quite a bit in our music. So we wanted to have that song uh, included because of that because it was so different from everything else yeah and i don't think it sounds like anything you wrote before actually it's very innovative no. in a way i would say <laughs> no. that's usually what we try you know we always try to pick those songs that we feel like okay this is a little bit different if not in our whole catalog but recent in recent years or recent albums that we didn't have a song like this so let's try yeah, I think it will find its, you know, like definite, definitely like live fans and in a live arena or audience, it will make quite an impression. Yeah. yeah. You can also come yeah. out with some sort of a processional, <laughs> you know, outfit. <laughs> hey, you, should, you should be a music video director. You yeah. know, you have all these visions. Absolutely. Yeah. Really, really. After I listened to that song, I went to watch some videos of, of American marching bands because it's also very interesting how they like, they move like a flock of birds, you know, like they have to like make this changes in shapes yeah. and then make some figure on the field. That is something connected to me. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And let's yeah, talk yeah. about another song on your album, The Change. It talks about being told lies and uh, like how people use obedient people for their own good. Yeah. Is it talking about a particular person or more like organizational evil? Um, well, it, de it definitely has like the root of the song is a particular person that I'm not obviously going to name, but, but yeah. So, you know, we, we all bump into these narcissistic people, right? You know, we all have some kind of experience with people who are just like uh, elbowing their way and using other people as their stepping stones. So that was kind of like the idea behind it that, oh, you know, I didn't know you know, that you are like this, but now it's also clear. And, and that, that, you know, that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to change this situation. And yeah, that, so that was kind of like the, the whole idea behind it. But it's, it's, it's more like the, the latter part of the album is, a, I feel like it has like this continuation, a little bit of even a, like a theme thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with Tightrope Walker, where you kind of like admit that, okay, I'm in a situation that, you know, whatever I say is kind of like flaring up as a big thing. And the next song change is that, okay, I need to change this. Yeah. And then there's a short little like interlude that is called separation, which is kind of like, you know, like, okay, now the thing, you know, happens yeah. and then you move forward. And then you have a snowstorm, which is coming after separation, which, which is like, you know, when you kind of like uh, you're on your own and you have lost something and you struggle through this uh, like dark, dark place. And, and, and then, yeah, so it's kind of like I felt like, you know, there's a there's a little bit of like, a, you know, being a prog band and all, you know, there's a little bit of a, like a theme on the on the B side of the album. The A side is different and then the B side is different. So that's how we kind of like crafted it this time. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I hope that people, people, people kind of like can relate to that mm -hmm. idea of, you know, how it's written. Definitely.
uh, no, it's smart. Yeah, otherwise, if uh, more of the songs are in the same kind of upbeat or sad key, then obviously it becomes tiring even to listen to an album like that. So you yeah. made it very smart in like changing the moods, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I've noticed that the album is much more like vocally stripped, like naked kind of. You know, <laughs> it creates a feeling of such you know intimacy with the artist, like even extreme closeness. Yeah. You know, uh, did you do it to underline the lyrics of the songs or to create or to create like this juxtaposition? Like here comes the quiet part and now the chorus <laughs> yeah we uh, you know we have a little bit of a bad habit of like uh, putting too much on the album always because it's like we have so many creative ideas and we are three guys who are all really creative and then of course we have also like uh, Sami and Sami and Marcus in our band who are all very creative so the biggest job for us to is to kind of like not do it every single time you know oh i have a nice let's put a harmony here let's put a thing here so with this album we wanted to keep it like what does the song actually need you know and it many many times it it doesn't really need anything else except one instrument and the and the vocal for example we had a 70 i don't even know 78 piece budapest orchestra in the last song but they are not playing all the time. They're like, for example, when when I start singing, it's only me and acoustic guitar. You know, when the song when the song the intro is over and I start like the song, it's only one man and an acoustic guitar. But we had almost eighty people playing that song, wow. so it was like, you know, you you don't have to use them. You use them in the correct place, and then it feels like okay now. No, it works. Absolutely, so. yeah. You can be yeah. subtle, but you know, use the right tones of the right instrument at the right time. Absolutely. Yeah. I find the most optimistic and inspiring track on the album is probably the Ascension Day, at least to me. <laughs> and yeah. probably it's my favorite so far on the album. I think if it was sung less like uh, in a choir, because you like to sing like a trio or maybe even baking vocals from the other members, yeah. But if it was yeah. more with like a one vocal and more like punkish attitude, it could sound like Green Day or Offspring or something. <laughs> This is a song that Kia wrote by himself. He was uh, very close to Russian border, actually. Right. He was he was camping, you know. He was camping and he had like his guitar with him and he was playing that that riff. And I guess I guess you know the it has a very positive riff, you know, and a positive. It does. I kept popping to it, to it, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like a pop. It's like a pop, very popish song. And Kia had this idea that the, it's. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe it was a beautiful day or something like that when he wrote it. But he, he said that, you know, when we started working on the lyrics, he said that it has to be uh, about that exact moment when you come out from something very kind of like depressing and you kind of feel like alive again. So that is the actual like moment of like now I feel good and I need to go out from my room or from this dark place and, and meet people and be more extrovert and so that that is kind of like that was the where you know the starting point of the lyrics and then ascension day that the actual title came to us on ascension day this year mm -hmm. you know ascension day is a yeah. is a holiday and and i was just like yeah ascension day actually this is this is exactly what it is you know this is exactly what the song needs you know the title has to be this and then it just came together nicely. And it's true. It's kind of like the song is a very, how would I put it? It's uh, it's very unlike any other Von yeah, Herten Brothers. Very, very like punk rock kind of attitude, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a very positive kind of like uh, crowd pleaser mm -hmm. in a way. It's actually going to be our second single. And it's, okay. it's coming out in a in very soon now. Wow, so. you've just preceded my question about the next single coming up. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be accompanied said, by a music video too? Yeah, we did. We shot actually like this. Uh, well, you see, but I, I won't explain it now. But we did. We did like a music video, a very very simple one, but. We felt like it was cool. In March, it was announced that you're officially joined by Markus Payakala on keyboard, saxophone, flute, percussion, and backing vocals. Oh my God, that's a list of so many skills. Like, how did you find out about this multi-instrumentalist? Were you longtime friends? We have been friends for a couple of years. And actually, he already played on our uh, previous album. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got to know him five years, more than five years ago now. 
when he was playing uh, with Sami Kuoppamäki on Hello Helsinki, uh, the lead singer of Hello Helsinki, which is a big band in Finland. She made like a solo album, so Markus was uh, playing in that lineup. So, so we got to we got to meet him and we learned that oh my god, this guy knows like he's he's actually also a drummer, but he doesn't play drums with us. So, but yeah, so. Now and then, Bobby, Bobby, uh, who was with us for six years, he said that he's gonna move on and and find something else. Uh, and then we immediately, uh, you know, thought of Marcus because he's also he was actually on our on our acoustic tour uh, by the uh, at the end of like 2024, uh, three actually, yeah. So he was playing with us, and so it was very natural because he already knew the dynamics and many of the songs. Did he so have to drop him, some other band he was playing at at the time, or was it smooth? <laughs> uh, it was smooth, actually. He has he he's like a, he's like us, you know. He has his own band and he's make creating his own music and and he's more like a you know he's a multi instrumentalist. So he's doing like jazz and he's doing prog and he's doing all these different things. But yeah, so we just asked him, you know, if he has time and if he's interested, and he he was. So we are very happy because. Obviously, you know, having somebody who can do the the woodwinds like flute and yeah, saxophone and stuff, those wind ones. It, it definitely brings something new to the band, you know, Absolutely. which is really great. I could yeah. clearly hear the saxophone parts that were yeah on the album, and that was like, whoa, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> First thought, yeah. it's like it doesn't normally come with rock or metal music, so you would think like, yeah. how does that combine? But you know, like a little bit of everything doesn't hurt, right? He, it's like he's your yeah. fifth element. He's the one that you know makes us different from any everybody else. I think so, very much. Yeah, signature sounds. It's just, uh, yeah. although yeah. you already have it, but it's like signature extra element to that. Yeah, and you yeah, already yeah. announced a few shows in Britain. Yeah, at the end of this year. What about the rest of Europe? Is it planned for next year? We are planning. We are planning, and then there we have a, like a new agent who is trying to work uh, work dates for us for March and April. But we'll see how how he like. If he can get some good shows that would like, uh, you know, you need usually what you do, what you need is like a few good festival shows and then you can do in between this touring so that it's not too costly. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do. I mean, it's it's been uh, something that the band has been wanting to do for many, many years to come more to Europe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't really been able to since since the like last seven, eight years. So yeah. we're definitely trying. We're, we're definitely trying and we're trying to hire the people who can make it happen. Yeah. And also, like, uh, we're trying to find, uh, like, support slots with some other bands. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody, like, a bigger band than us who, who would take us on board, that would be really cool. But uh, so far... I think we are too good for them. And I mean, it could turn the opposite way. The album could be so successful, people will be looking to be your supporting bands. You never know. <laughs> well, I never know. I'm trying to be realistic. It's our ninth album, so <laughs> you know, let's hope that uh, this would be the the album that makes a difference, and we that can come more to, to Europe. It time. opens you the window to all Europe as well. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> yeah, I wish you, of course, to have great fun playing these new songs live. It's always amazing to play your new songs, which you only heard in the studio. Yeah. Years out, like yeah, to, to bring them to the audience. Hope that you have amazing reception with the album, also on the lyrical side, because it's really so poetic. You can just write the lyrics on some poetic website, and they will go for literary pieces. You know, so like yeah. hope best with your upcoming yeah performances and touring and looking and booking and so on i believe uh, it will be quite an uh, interesting and intense year for you we hope so. we hope so we are we are, are we are in a good place we are in a good mood we feel, we feel that we have uh, once again we have been able to create something interesting for our fans and uh, you know we are looking forward to people hearing it that's the key thing you know whether it's successful or not you know that remains to be seen but for us as fathers of these creations, it's always nice to have, you know, just to just to know that it's out there for people to hear, you know, because it's like, you know, giving giving birth to babies, you know, so yeah. you, you want to be proud and you want to you want the world to be able to see them or hear them. Yeah. Baby number nine. That's a lot. Baby number nine. <laughs>
<laughs> the proud fathers of nine elves also is crazy. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for the interview. You are always a delight to talk to. Absolute pleasure to have been talking to you today. Thank you, Tatiana. It's good to see you doing well. And, and, and I wish you all the best for uh, your future adventures in Malta. Thank you. Thank you so much. A new chapter, The Change. <laughs> yeah, the change. Coming up. Yeah. I, ho I hope it's not as painful as The Change song, but you know, like. Some bruises <laughs> will be there, but we'll be still going to ascension. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you so exactly. much. Have a lovely day. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. And you too. Bye. Bye then. Thank you.